from the cop who assaulted an innocent driver for no reason, to the corrupt officer who got schooled by a teenager. You'd think these cops are auditioning for a new crime drama, but no folks, this is real life. Brace yourself, as we are about to witness incredible instances where corrupt cops are caught on camera. Let's hope these officers have some explanation, because they're about to get a one-way ticket to the not-so-glamorous side of justice. Taylor police officer caught manhandling a driver. It was a seemingly ordinary day in April of 2016 when Calvin Jones, a 26-year-old motorist, found himself at the center of a traffic stop that would soon turn into a shocking display of police misconduct. The incident, captured on a dashcam video, would expose the dark underbelly of corruption within the law enforcement system. The video begins with the officer's patrol car pulling over Jones's vehicle on a quiet street in Taylor. As the officer approaches the driver's side, he out of nowhere requests Jones's driver's license. However, instead of complying, Jones questions the reason for being pulled over. How you doing, sir? How you doing, man? Do you have your driver's license vehicle brazier on you? Uh, what, what, what's going on? Uh, I'd be happy to tell you once I see who I'm talking to, all right? Uh, I need, I need you to let me know, like, what's going on. Like, what, 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 I, what, what happened? What, what's going on? Uh, I'd be, like I said, I'd be happy to tell you once I, I see information. I'm not giving you my information. The officer, who still refused to give his reason for pulling Jones over, continued to insist on seeing his license, even going as far as issuing a well-disguised threat. Failure to give me my information is a restful offense, okay? So you can either do this the easy way or the hard way, all right? I need to know what you're pulling me over for. I'm going to tell you once I see information, all right? I'm gonna give, I got information, but I'm not giving you my information until you tell me what you put. Right, here's For the next few minutes, the officer engages in a conversation with Jones, who now insists that his passenger, a woman judging from her voice, gets what's happening on camera. All right, here's, here's, here's the deal. You either give me your ID or you go to jail. How about that? Put, put, put this on camera, man, because you're not dealing with this. The officer radios in and refers to Jones as an uncooperative occupant. Frustration begins to mount as Jones adamantly refuses to hand over his identification until he is informed of the reason for the stop. Tensions escalate as the officer's patience wears thin. All right, open the door. You gotta let me know what's going on, man. You're not going. To... You're going to jail. Is what's going on? For what? You ain't. What charges? On what charges? <laughs> wow. <laughs> In a shocking turn of events, the officer forcefully breaks open a window with the assistance of three other officers. They proceed to yank Jones out of his car, employing excessive force to subdue him. Put your hand behind your back. <laughs> it is during this violent arrest that Jones reportedly loses consciousness after being subjected to a chokehold. The incident raises serious questions about the officer's response and whether it was justified given the circumstances. The aftermath of the arrest revealed further troubling details. Jones's wife, who was present during the incident, was also arrested, raising concerns about the arrest of someone trying to cooperate with the police. Jones himself alleged mistreatment while in custody, highlighting potential violations of his rights. The dismissal of charges against Jones and his wife, followed by the involvement of the ACLU and the filing of a complaint, prompted a thorough investigation into the incident. The Taylor police chief assured the public of a diligent examination of the case, promising accountability for those involved. Johannesburg officer caught asking for bribe. Next, we uncover the shocking truth behind a corrupt Johannesburg cop caught on camera. This jaw-dropping footage, which has gone viral, reveals a police officer engaging in an act of bribery with a motorist. Our story begins with the motorist driving through the city on his way home after a long day at work. Little did he know that this routine journey would soon take an unexpected and harrowing turn. Unbeknownst to the driver, he had caught the attention of a corrupt police officer whose intentions were far from upholding the law. 
the officer, whose identity remained shrouded in secrecy, had allegedly pulled the driver over for drunk driving. However, it soon became clear that this encounter was not about enforcing the law, but rather about personal gain. As the driver parked by the side of the road, the officer began to interrogate him, accusing him of driving under the influence. Despite his protests of innocence, the officer remained steadfast in his accusations, determined to exploit the situation for personal gain. It was at this moment that the passenger in the driver's vehicle, a quick-thinking individual who recognized the gravity of the situation, decided to take matters into their own hands. Armed with a smartphone, they discreetly began recording the encounter. All over the road. Now can we go and check you? You're going to check? But I told you. Well, what, what choices do I have? What are my choices? Capturing every word and action that transpired. As the recording continued, the officer's true intentions began to surface. In a shocking turn of events, the officer brazenly requested a bribe from the driver, demanding a sum of 200 rands in exchange for turning a blind eye to the alleged traffic violation. Your choice is this, this one. Yeah. We can talk now. Yeah. If only 200 to go. Because of that guy, if they can say you are drunk, there's no more talking. Because you are going to bail the audacity of this request left both the driver and the passenger stunned, their faith in the integrity of law enforcement shattered. Caught off guard by the officer's blatant corruption, the driver mustered the courage to ask for the officer's badge number, hoping to hold him accountable for his actions. The passenger, realizing the power of the evidence they had captured, informed the officer that their encounter was being recorded. So, yeah. so, so you, you saying that we can, we can sort out like this? Yeah. Okay, so what happens if I say, can I get your badge number? My badge number? Yeah. You want my badge number? Yes, Be because you are now actually recording. Okay. No I want to find your badge number oh, you want to because you've just said that 200 bucks will sort anything out. However, the officer, fully aware of the potential consequences, callously refused to provide any form of identification, further solidifying his position as a rogue cop. It was at this critical juncture that the officer's world came crashing down around him. However, the driver's resolve remained unshaken, fueled by a determination to bring this officer's misconduct to light. With the recording which was posted online serving as undeniable evidence, the Johannesburg Metropolitan Police Department, JMPD, got wind of what had occurred and promised that justice would prevail and that this corrupt officer would face the consequences of his actions. Teen captures, corrupt cop arresting his father. It was September 29, 2019, when officers from the Park City Police Department received a call regarding a loud argument on Spalding Court and Racker Club Drive. Responding to the complaint, the officers arrived at the scene to find two men engaged in a heated exchange. The argument centered around the two teenagers, including Jack Franchek, riding their gas engine bicycles on the street. One of the men involved in the argument approached the officers and claimed to have been in a dispute with Michael Franchek, Jack's father. This individual alleged that Franchek had become confrontational and aggressive during their interaction. Adding to the intensity of the situation, a woman who witnessed the argument informed the officers that she had seen a gun in Franchek's possession as he walked away from the altercation. With the information provided by the witnesses, the officers decided to locate Michael Franchek's residence and make contact with him. Their intention was to address the situation and ensure the safety of all parties involved. As the officers arrived at Michael Franchek's front porch, he came out already poised with his cell phone recording what was going on, almost like he had an idea that the situation would escalate. Can I help you? Hello, are you, uh, Michael? Hi, uh, can I help you with something? Yeah, uh, we're here about a... And your name? Uh, Officer Rodriguez. Uh, first name? Jim. Jim, how are you, Jim? Can, can and I... your name? Please? Sure. Officer. Sorry, badge number? What's that? Badge number, okay. please? Okay. After the formalities were exchanged, the police officers proceeded to question him about the argument. Their goal was to address the escalating situation and gather more information about the alleged firearm. However, their encounter took an unexpected turn when Franchek, upon refusing to answer, made the sudden decision to run inside his home. Let's go ahead and talk about the incident that you had out here a few minutes I ago. don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Step down here for me. No, yeah, no, no. Franchek's attempt to evade the officers and retreat into his house caught them off guard. The officers then forcefully badged into his home without a search warrant and tried to arrast him. Oh, you didn't do anything. You just came into my house without a warrant. 
You're what did you, I'm going to run you away from you. You, you. you just did. Is there any gun in your back pocket? I just want to make sure we're safe. We're safe. Okay. I'm not coming outside. Even though Michael constantly reassured them that he wasn't with a gun, the officers didn't pay attention to him as they tasered him, trying to get him out of the house. That was the moment he yelled for his son, Jack, who began to record what was going on, and for some reason, this seemed to make them more angry, and they attempted to collect his phone. Just stop resisting. I'm not so resisting. I'm not resisting. Don't go take his phone. No. Don't take his phone. Don't take his phone. Back. Things started to escalate when another officer tried to intimidate Jack from getting close to his father. Now. Stop harassing me. We're just trying to. We're just I'm trying videoing to. this. You can do this. Please get out of my personal space. No. Yes. You're, you're not gonna. You're not gonna interfere get out of with my what we're doing. Space. This is my property. Please you're not gonna me. interfere with an arrest. Seeing that the young boy wouldn't budge, they decided he needed to be detained. But Jack wasn't having any of that. Me, me and his. So that's, why are you guys arresting him? That's not the why are you tagging? Yeah. He can just lie. One of the officers whose body cam fell in the house went back to get it, even though he had no right to entry. And when Jack followed him, he began to threaten the teenager. Hey! 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 Stay back. I'm going in my house. Stay back. I'm going in. If you try and come past me, you're going to go on the ground face first. Do you understand okay, me? Okay, and then I'm going to file a complaint against you. The officers knew they had nothing against him, so they decided to bring up the legality of riding a gas-powered bicycle without a driver's license. But Jack proved once again that he was no pushover. Seeing that they couldn't get any dirt on the teenager, they took Franchek off to be booked in the Summit County Jail. Officer caught on camera stealing court papers. As we delve into the shocking events that unfolded in the Maricopa County courtroom, we find ourselves transported back to October 19, 2009. Defense attorney Joanne Cuccia, a seasoned legal professional, appeared before Judge Lisa Flores to argue the case of Antonio Lozano, a defendant who would soon become entangled in a web of corruption. Cuccia, known for her tenacity and dedication to her clients, had achieved a favorable outcome for Lozano, and she was now passionately advocating for a lenient sentence. Little did she know that her pursuit of justice would be marred by the actions of Maricopa County Detention Officer Adam Stoddard. As the courtroom video system silently recorded the proceedings, Stoddard, a figure of authority responsible for maintaining order and security, brazenly approached the defense counsel's table. With a calculated move, he positioned himself next to Cuccia, seemingly innocuous at first glance. However, the camera captured his eyes darting towards a file on the table, his gaze fixated for long seconds. Then, in a shocking display of audacity, Stoddard surreptitiously reached out and took hold of a document from the file. With a sense of urgency, he examined it for an additional period of time, his eyes scanning the words that would forever change the course of this courtroom drama. Without hesitation, he passed the document to another officer, Deputy Francisco Campillo, who stood just behind Cuccia, completely unaware of the unfolding conspiracy. Stoddard's justification for his actions would later send shockwaves through the legal community. He claimed to have seen three or four inches of the document in plain view, where the words going to steal and money appeared in the same paragraph. In a twisted interpretation, he believed that the document described a crime about to be committed. Fueling his suspicions further, Stoddard cited previous cases involving attorneys Jason Keller and David DaCosta, who had been accused of smuggling drugs to Mexican mafia clients in jail. Unbeknownst to Stoddard, his actions had not gone unnoticed. Kucha, a fierce advocate for justice, swiftly filed a motion to hold both Stoddard and Campillo in contempt of court. The motion landed in the hands of Superior Court Judge Gary Donahoe, who meticulously examined the evidence and weighed the gravity of the situation. In a landmark ruling, Judge Donahoe found that Campillo, though involved in the document's photocopying, was not in contempt as he had merely acquiesced to a colleague's request. However, the judge did not extend the same leniency to Stoddard, holding him in direct civil contempt, Judge Donahoe issued a firm order. Stoddard must hold a press conference no later than November 30th, 2009, and offer a sincere verbal and written apology to Cuccia. The judge emphasized that Cuccia had done nothing wrong, and that Stoddard's statement to the press, linking her to lawyers accused of drug smuggling, had tarnished her professional reputation. But Stoddard, defiant and unyielding, refused to comply with the contempt order. I cannot and will not apologize for putting court safety First. In a bold declaration, Stoddard proclaimed that he wasn't sorry for what he had done. He believed that Judge Donahoe had ordered him to feel something he did not and say something he could not. He saw himself caught between a lie and imprisonment, and he chose the latter. With unwavering determination, Stoddard reported to jail where he would spend the next 10 days.
cop caught stealing $1,300 from construction worker. As the sun set over the vibrant streets of Coney Island, a routine encounter between the police and a construction worker took a sinister turn. Lamar Joy, a hard-working Brooklyn resident, found himself at the center of a shocking incident that would forever change his perception of law enforcement. It all began when the NYPD received a radio call about a man with a gun in the area. Responding to the call, officers approached Joy's, who happened to match the suspect's description. What should have been a standard procedure quickly escalated into to a terrifying ordeal. As the officers attempted to apprehend Joy's friend, he instinctively resisted, questioning the legitimacy of their actions. Little did he know that his decision to speak up would have dire consequences. Seeing what was happening, Joy himself decided to interfere on behalf of his friend, questioning the officer's actions. In a disturbing turn of events, one officer forcefully slammed Joy against a nearby fence, subjecting him to an unnecessary display of aggression. Look, you see this? Look. You see this? You see this? With Joy pinned against the fence, the officer proceeded to conduct a pat-down search, ostensibly searching for the alleged weapon. However, what happened next would shock the world. In a brazen act of theft, the officer reached into Joy's pocket and extracted a substantial amount of cash. The video footage captured this shocking act, leaving viewers in disbelief, but the officer's actions didn't stop there. In a display of excessive force, he then proceeded to pepper spray Joy, leaving him writhing in pain and disoriented when he tried collecting his money back. The officer quickly retreated from the scene, leaving behind a trail of chaos and confusion. To make matters worse, Joy's sister, witnessing the unjust treatment of her brother, bravely stepped forward to demand the officer's badge number. In a cruel twist of fate, she too became a victim of the officer's abuse of power, as he callously pepper sprayed her without hesitation. The aftermath of this harrowing encounter left Joy and his sister traumatized and bewildered Joy's lawyer has since come forward, alleging that the officer not only stole over $1,300 in cash, but also failed to return the money. The NYPD, on the other hand, claims to have found only $62 and a cell phone on Joy, both of which were vouchered at the police station. It is important to note that Joy had withdrawn the money to celebrate his birthday, a joyous occasion that was cruelly overshadowed by this incident. Due to the traumatic experience, he was unable to collect his money or phone from the precinct station, leaving him further victimized by the very institution meant to protect him. This shocking encounter ignited a firestorm of outrage within the Brooklyn community and beyond. The blatant abuse of power and alleged theft by an NYPD officer shattered the trust between law enforcement and the people they are sworn to serve. As the story continued to unfold, the demand for justice grew louder, with Joy's lawyer calling for the return of the stolen money and a thorough investigation into the officers involved. Florida, officer caught planting drugs, Caught on camera, Officer Zachary Wester was caught red-handed planting drugs on unsuspecting drivers during routine traffic stops. This scandal, which unfolded between 2016 and 2018, has forced prosecutors to drop charges in nearly 120 cases, highlighting the extent of Wester's deceit. The body camera footage presented during the court proceedings shows Wester surreptitiously planting baggies filled with drugs before conducting searches. The motive behind his actions remains unknown, but prosecutors suspect it may have been driven by his desire to join the narcotics division. Our story begins with Zachary Wester, a former deputy of the Jackson County Sheriff's Office in Florida. Wester, just 28 years old at the time, was entrusted with the responsibility of upholding the law and protecting the community. Little did anyone know that behind his badge, a sinister plot was unfolding. Between 2016 and 2018, Wester embarked on a spree of misconduct that would shake the foundations of the criminal justice system. During routine traffic stops, he he would plant drugs on unsuspecting drivers, fabricating evidence to secure arrests and convictions. He was just a digging under a baseball glove and then searched that immediate area for weapons. They took the baseball glove and there was the bag in the straw. Mm -hmm. You going to jail, buddy? You going to jail? <laughs> In another instance, Wester was seen about to detain a man after finding a baggie in his car. We don't know what that maybe appears to be. Uh, maybe meth or cocaine. Okay. I've 
never seen that in my life. But how did Wester manage to get away with it for so long? The answer lies in the body camera footage that would ultimately expose Wester's deceit. Investigators, suspicious of his actions, meticulously analyzed over what 300 minutes of video, searching for any signs of wrongdoing. What they discovered was nothing short of shocking. In the footage, Wester can be seen conducting traffic stops with an air of authority and professionalism. But behind his calm demeanor, a sinister plan was unfolding. He would surreptitiously hold baggies filled with drugs, ready to be planted on innocent drivers. With a swift and calculated move, he would place the drugs in their vehicles, ensuring that his victims would face serious criminal charges. As the number of arrests and convictions grew, so did the doubts surrounding Wester's conduct. Innocent individuals found themselves facing life-altering consequences, their reputations tarnished, and their lives turned upside down. But it wasn't until the mounting evidence and the courage of those affected that the truth began to emerge. Teresa Odom, one of Wester's victims, bravely stepped forward to share her harrowing experience. Arrested and convicted after Wester planted methamphetamine in her car, Odom's life was forever changed. It is yogurt, sir. I know. Okay. It's how, yogurt. How about it's, this, sir? That is not mine. No, sir. I'm not going to ask you any no, direct, sir. I'm not going to ask you any direct I'm, questions. I'm going to read you your rights first, okay? Nemesis finally caught up with Wester when investigations revealed his role in the drug arrests and in May, Wester was found guilty on 19 charges, including racketeering, official misconduct, fabricating evidence, perjury, false imprisonment, and possession of controlled substances and drug paraphernalia. He was sentenced to more than 12 years in prison. The verdict sent shockwaves through the law enforcement community and provided a glimmer of hope for those who had been wronged. Miami officer arrests people for no reason. On November 4, 2022, two men identified as Rafael Antonio Gomez Osorio, also known as Ragamonkey, and Joey were out filming when they stumbled upon Officer Heredia Rubio of the Miami Police. Little did they know that their encounter would expose a disturbing abuse of power. On that fateful day, auditors Rafael Gomez and Joey set out on their mission to document police interactions. Armed with their cameras, they were determined to shed light on any potential misconduct and hold law enforcement accountable. As Rafael and Joey walked along the bustling streets of Miami, they noticed a police cruiser parked on the side. Curiosity peaked, they decided to approach and see what was happening. As Rafael and Joey approached the police cruiser, they noticed Officer Heredia Rubio sitting inside the cruiser. As the auditors continued to film, one of them pointed out to Officer Rubio that he was blocking traffic, but the officer insisted he was doing his job. Huh? You're blocking traffic, yeah, sir? Bro. I'm doing my job. Okay. okay, we didn't say nothing now, to you. Pero since you're here, we didn't say anything. Okay, no importa, but now I'm saying it to you. Since you're here, I want to see both of you IDs. What? What? <laughs> 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 no, it's not. The auditors were taken aback by Officer Heredia Rubio's sudden demand for identification. Can you call your sergeant? Both of you IDs. I don't have ID. I need ID. I don't have ID. No, yeah, I'm going to call my sergeant when I finish I getting your ID. ID. I don't have okay, ID. So put your hands in there. Is this a lawful order? It is. How is it lawful? Because I'm giving it to you. They knew their rights and understood that filming in a public space was protected by the First Amendment. Rafael and Joey stood their ground, refusing to comply with Officer Heredia Rubio's unlawful request. Despite the men's clear assertion of their rights, Officer Heredia Rubio proceeded to handcuff them, detaining them in the back of his police cruiser. What are you doing? Stay right there. What's your name and badge number? Don't break my... What are you doing? They were shocked and confused, unsure of what they had done to warrant such treatment. Officer Heredia Rubio's actions were not only unjust, but also a violation of their constitutional rights. Officer Heredia Rubio claimed that he handcuffed both men and detained them for their safety. However, it was clear that his actions went beyond what was necessary to ensure his own well-being. Joey and Rafael evidently posed no threat to Officer Heredia Rubio, and there was no indication that they intended to flee or cause harm. So what, what, why did I put you, why did I put you in the back of my car? Why did I put you in the back of my car? Because I wanted to. Thank you. At the end, Officer Rubio revealed he had arrested and detained them simply because he wanted to. The auditor's encounter with Officer Heredia Rubio raises serious legal questions. Even if there was reasonable suspicion to detain them, Officer Heredia Rubio's use of handcuffs and the prolonged detention in the back of his cruiser exceeded what was reasonably necessary. This raises the possibility that the detention transformed into a de facto arrest, violating their Fourth Amendment rights. Arlington cop holds woman at gunpoint. 
In Arlington, a young black woman named Danielle Shanks found herself at the center of a terrifying encounter with the Arlington Police Department (PD). In a case of mistaken identity, the police held her at gunpoint and even attempted to erase surveillance footage. It all began when Danielle Shanks, an innocent young woman, found herself in a terrifying situation. The police were on the hunt for a black male suspect, but in a case of mistaken identity, they targeted Danielle instead. Guns were drawn, and the situation quickly escalated. So this is a learning curve for you? Putting guns to an innocent person bag? That's a learning curve. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying every, I said every call does something to learn. That's a learning curve. You put guns to my back. That's a learning curve for you? In the footage shown, Danielle could be heard speaking in a shaky voice about how the officer had put her gun to her back, but she was met with a dismissive response. The female cop in the video could be heard telling Danielle that it was a learning curve. The police admitted that they were looking for a man, yet they pulled out guns on Danielle, a young black woman. And to make matters worse, they had the audacity to call it a learning curve. With guns pressed against her back, Danielle's life had hung in the balance, and it was deemed a miracle she survived, yet her complaints about their actions were dismissed. You put guns to my back. That's a learning curve? I could have died. And that's a learning curve for you? That's a learning curve for you. Got they put guns to my back. Okay. I learned this is my life. And you want to talk about your education? The lack of humanity and common decency displayed by the police officers involved was evident, like that wasn't. Bad enough, the officers then attempted to wipe the surveillance footage that served as evidence of how they had mishandled the situation. Why are you wiping the surveillance video? Ma'am, I can't elaborate on our investigation. Why are you wiping the surveillance video? Watch it. I just heard you say until you finish wiping the surveillance video. You misheard. Surprisingly, this incident was not addressed by local news or the police department. Everyone who saw the video online concluded that the lack of accountability and transparency surrounding this case was deeply concerning. A highway cop caught over-speeding. In a shocking display of corruption and hypocrisy, a patrol officer is about to learn a valuable lesson from an unexpected source. As the sun beat down on the highway, two teenagers cruised along in their car, unaware of the life-altering encounter that awaited them. Little did they know that their journey would take an unexpected turn, leading to a confrontation with a patrol officer that would leave them questioning the very fabric of justice. Suddenly, flashing lights appeared in their rearview mirror, signaling them to pull over. The driver, a young man, complied, bringing the car to a halt on the side of the road. The patrol officer approached the vehicle with an air of authority and wasted no time in getting to the point. I pulled you over for speeding, he stated matter-of-factly, his voice laced with authority. I'm just doing a citation for your speed. We're going at 80 and a 55. I need to take the tint off the windows. So I just need to sign this white box here. Confusion washed over the face of the young woman sitting in the passenger seat. She couldn't comprehend how they could be receiving a ticket for speeding when they had been following the patrol officer and his lights were not on. I have a question really quick. Sure. Um, how are we getting a ticket for speeding if we were following you and your lights were not on? He stumbled for a response, searching for a plausible explanation to justify his actions. Because I was trying to catch up to somebody. But your lights and why were you on. following me? You were in, I'm saying you were in front of us and your lights weren't on, so we were going over speed. So how are we getting a ticket? To understand her defense, it is important to know that most states require police officers not to drive at high speeds without their flashes on or sirens blaring. While these rules may differ in various states, the use of flashes when exceeding the speed limit is to indicate an emergency. While it may seem contradictory, the officer's response that he was trying to catch up with someone does hold some legal ground. If the patrol officer was genuinely attempting to catch up with another vehicle, he would not necessarily be required to have his lights and flashes on. However, if he was simply driving above the speed limit without a valid reason, he would indeed be breaking state laws and acting as a hypocrite. It is worth noting that law enforcement departments and state highway patrol agencies generally encourage their officers to use flashing lights whenever they are speeding. This serves multiple purposes, including alerting other drivers to the presence of an emergency vehicle and ensuring the safety of both the officer and the public. By utilizing flashing lights, officers can minimize the risk of accidents and maintain their reputation as upholders of the law. This means that if Officer Johnson was driving along the highway at 80 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone without a valid reason, he would indeed be breaking state laws and acting as a hypocrite. The encounter between the patrol officer and the teenagers, which was posted online, sheds light on the need for accountability within law enforcement.
Warren police officer caught assaulting inmate. Finally, we delve into the events that led up to the shocking assault carried out against an inmate by the corrupt cop in Warren. It all began when a 19-year-old man from Detroit found himself in the clutches of the law, arrested for the heinous crimes of carjacking and being a felon in possession. On that fateful day, the young man was brought into the booking area of the city jail, where Officer Matthew Rodriguez, a veteran of the Warren Police Department, awaited him. The atmosphere was tense as the weight of the charges hung heavy in the air, little did anyone know that this encounter would take a dark and violent turn. The exact words exchanged between the young man and Officer Rodriguez remain a mystery, lost in the absence of audio from the video footage, but something went terribly wrong, triggering a chain of events that would forever tarnish the reputation of law enforcement officers. In an act of sheer brutality, Officer Rodriguez unleashed a sudden and unprovoked assault on the defenseless inmate. The video footage, captured by surveillance cameras, reveals the shocking moment when Rodriguez's fist connects with the young man's head, sending him reeling. The force of the blow is enough to knock the victim to the ground, but the assault doesn't end there. With a disturbing lack of remorse, Rodriguez continues his assault, delivering blow after blow to the helpless inmate after slamming the inmate to the ground. Each punch lands with sickening force, leaving no doubt about the officer's intent to cause harm. The victim's head is slammed into the unforgiving ground, further exacerbating the brutality of the attack. As the assault unfolds, Two other officers who had entered the room tried to get Officer Rodriguez to stop but his feeble attempt to intervene fell on deaf ears as Rodriguez's rage continued to fuel the assault. Adding to the gravity of the situation, it is revealed that Officer Rodriguez failed to have his body camera turned on, a clear violation of protocol. This omission raises questions about the officer's intentions and further erodes the trust that should exist between law enforcement and the community they serve. After a while, Rodriguez was seen dragging the inmate and throwing him into a cell. The video footage, released by the Warren Police Department, sends shockwaves through the community, leaving citizens outraged and demanding justice. The internal investigation conducted by the police department swiftly recommends criminal charges against Rodriguez, acknowledging the severity of his actions. However, the repercussions of this assault extend beyond the immediate incident. The reputation of law enforcement officers, who are meant to serve and protect, is tarnished by the actions of one corrupt cop. The community is left questioning the integrity of those entrusted with upholding the law. As the investigation unfolds, Officer Rodriguez finds himself facing two misdemeanor charges, a consequence that some may view as lenient given the brutality of the assault. However, it is important to understand the legal requirements for proving felonious assault, which necessitate the use of a weapon or the infliction of a serious injury, neither of which are present in this case. Nevertheless, the severity of Officer Rodriguez's actions cannot be understated. The assault on the inmate, within the confines of a police station, raises disturbing questions about the officer's mindset and the potential for abuse of power within the law enforcement system. With the actions of these officers, they quickly went from being the good guys in blue to being booed. If you'd like to watch more amazing videos like this, click on the cards showing on your screens right now.